Now, the spate of insecurity in Nigeria has uh, seen the United States advising its citizens to reconsider traveling to Nigeria. In a new travel advisory, the U.S. government lists 14 states in Nigeria where its citizens should avoid going to, if at all, they have to travel to the country. Now, Bornu, Yobe, Bayelsa, Cross River, Delta and nine other states were listed in the advisory. The travel advisory issued on April the 20th placed Nigeria on level three due to crime, terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping and maritime crime. Joining me to discuss uh, this is uh, public affairs analyst Dayo Lumuagu and uh, via Skype from Abuja is the executive uh, director, emergency and risk alert, Biru Olajuigbe. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. I will begin with you, Beru Olajibe. Uh, we have seen uh, several um, travel advisory from the U.S. This is not the first time. But uh, what concerns you with uh, this uh, recent uh, travel advisory from the U.S.? Well, it, it, it's normal thing that USA, of, of course, what a caring nation should do to our citizens. It's just like a father. When uh, uh, do you do you what do, what advice do you give your father your, your child now if he has to travel from Abuja to Kaduna or from all these things that have been mentioned in the uh, travel advisory of the United States? The challenge in the challenge in Nigeria is obvious. Within the last one week, it has been reported that 239 people have been killed. Why 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 40 uh, why 44 have been kidnapped? These are reported cases. It's more than that, possibly do, uh, 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 times two of that. What type of nation? The problem, the challenge is that uh, we, 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 we have descended to a state of uh, anomaly. We are lawlessness is what is opened across the news and cranny of Nigeria. The challenge is among us. People are being killed, and of course, uh, uh, and there is no adequate and competent uh, response from uh, uh, authorities that have responsibility for protection, even for preventing the attack in the first place. So it is hard that United States has to give its uh, uh, citizens the advice so that uh, they are removed from arms length. The responsibility of a responsive and responsible state is to ensure protection for our citizens, to ensure that the citizens are not placed on arms way. Nigeria has become one killing nation. The bet is expanding. It started from the northeast. It has, of course, it's ubiquitous everywhere now. So the sort of life has become meaningless. State of anarchy is here. Uh, life is uh, short, nasty and brutish, as Thomas Hobbes described it. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have gone back to the state of nature. That is the situation in Nigeria today. And there must be concerted effort from consigning government, right. agencies, military and non-military, to square up to these hodges of violence that have mm -hmm. taken Nigeria by the jugular. All right, let's bring the conversation to uh, the studio now and let's uh, hear from Dayo Lumuwagun. Uh, the president uh, changed the security chiefs and a lot of Nigerians were expecting that these issues outlined by the U.S. in its travel advisory will be addressed or tackled head on. But uh, not much has been seen. If you look at the papers this morning, you see that it is uh, a lot of stories on insecurity is splashed all over the papers. And if you look at even our stories this morning, it's more about uh, the state of insecurity. And a lot of persons will say that it's even beyond the 14 states that uh, the U.S. mentioned, that it is across the 36 states of, of the Federation. What really is, is the challenge here because so much of expectation when the president came in in 2015 he was riding on the fact that he was going to address these issues and our guest uh, uh, said that talked about response adequate and competent response are you saying that uh, or do you think that efforts being put in place by the government so far hasn't uh, been adequate 
and uh, it's not competent enough. Uh, so, uh, again, I'm trying to, to see how my response would be. Uh, I, I know the, 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 this government wants us to, to tone down our language when it comes to issues like this. And uh, I mean, well, clearly, there's no way you, you, you will not say these things. Uh, so what effort are we talking about? Mm. You see, yeah, we don't expect a magic, we don't expect a miracle from the, the, the new service chiefs. But the truth is, have they been in the Nigeria I army mean, before? Are this part of the Nigerian apparatus before? Uh, so clearly they are not new to this. Right. All right. So if they are not new to this, so we don't need a forever before we begin to get some signal that we can rely on this new team. But again, you see, it's very clear, and a lot of things we don't know that perhaps the federal government alone can answer. We don't, I mean, they are clearly there. Now, th th there's no way you, uh, I mean, the, the federal government is just hypocritical about this. Really? That is my word for it. How do you it, mean? It's hypocrisy it? in the sense that, uh, you see, so I give you this example. Now, IPO was proscribed the other day. Mm. What has IPO done that Boko Haram in the North has not done? Yeah, that these people bandit has not done. A country of the earth. So what, why has they not been proscribed as, as, as terrorists? What more evil? What evil can, what more can any organization do before you proscribe them? You see, because they are not seen as terrorists, it, 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 the, the, the response they are give, that, that, that is given out follows that plan. Well, the statement the president made recently with regards to the attack or, or the killing of the, some of the students that were kidnapped, he called them terrorists, those who carried out the attack. He said, they were, isn't, isn't that a way of proscribing these people? Is it the proscription we had in the past, it's not just somebody come to, it's just somebody make reference that they're terrorists. I can call people terrorists, but if the government has not seen you as terrorists, then I'm in trouble for even calling you a terrorist. But clearly, the, the, the operations of these guys is nothing but terrorism. And uh, again, if you're in a country where uh, it is the government officials, it is the federal government mm. that explained to people why uh, uh, people who have had sympathy for terrorism in the past, uh, they tell you they repented and they can hold government offices. I'm talking about Pantami, for example. Right. Now, the, the, the other day, uh, the former chairman of APC told us that once you come to APC, your sins are forgiven and you can do whatever, you can hold any position. And clearly we're seeing it playing out in Nigeria. Now, even if you become the act pope, if there's anything like that, the issue of Pantami, for example, you don't have any business in, in government, uh, I, mean, in, 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 I mean, having a public office. You don't even have any business there. You cannot be trusted. Mm. And so for government, after all the shouting and ranting of Nigerians, for government to be the one to come out and defend that, why it is the only, is the best man in Nigeria, uh, well, out of over 200 million people, that is the only person that can hold that office and take us to, to the promised land. You see, it, it speaks volume. Mm -hmm. And you see, regardless of what Nigerians are saying, I think the federal government has spoken, they have spoken loudly. And nothing, I write it, I say it again, nothing will change with this current template. Go get a 1,000 military chief, I mean, service chief. Nothing will change because, the, for me, the sincerity, the will to even kill all of this is not there. And so why will U.S. not say people should not travel to Nigeria? I mean, because you have your children in the home, you tell them where, they even brought you, like you tell them not to stay at, at, I mean, outside, to come home as quickly as possible. So, uh, it, it, and unfortunately, because in the same country, we talk about lost our revenue, we talk about we want to get foreigners into the country, and right. all that, and all that. Mm. And people, U.S. is saying, don't come to Nigeria. I hope other countries will not follow suit and say, don't come to Nigeria. Maybe the U.K. and other We have seen other businesses moving to other African countries. Some that were even in Nigeria are already moving out of the yeah, country. Yeah, because even people in Nigeria, again, I say it every time, you people are not safe. You go out, you are not sure. You only believe God for a miracle to take you back to your house. Mm. That is not, that should not be. And clearly the response, you see, and who is safe in Nigeria? You see your governors go in cap and beg the, the presidency. Oh, we are not safe. You see the, the, the house of Uzodema just raised, I mean, just, just raised the other day. Yes. Uh, who is safe? You see, so it looks like everybody is helpless. And the only God, the only person that can explain situation, that can save us, is the federal government and on the, this is clearly this is the, 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 this is i mean until we come to that point that realization that if there's a lot of things we don't know forget all kinds of uh, solution you may you may you may suggest except the federal government is ready to do something 
But, but the, like the effort put in place by the government, uh, some have said, is government um, trying or showing that they want to do something, Beru, uh, in, tr in uh, responding to what uh, Dai Lumuago has said. Uh, I wonder if you think that uh, the government's efforts is uh, not something uh, that so shows some level of genuineness on their part, like he is saying. Well, Dayo has put it well. But you must equally understand the context of our of the escalation of this crisis. Mm. The context is that we have a monolithic security arrangement within a plural society. A monolithic, monolithic in the sense that the ex-ship of security uh, institutions and agency were drawn from a specific one, uh, one area. And that is not good for our diversity management. That have created its own problem. Problem of people not uniting to fight, to own the war collectively, to fight together. That is not there. And this will have inevitably trickled into even the command structure of the military. If you feel that your people have been shortchanged and you are able fighting a war, you have to look back and reflect on it. Look, what type of war am I fighting? Am I not shortchanged even as a soldier? Within a plural society, you have monolithically led uh, military uh, agencies. I think that is not good. And the whole issue is not about military alone. We have suggested to the federal government of Muhammad Buhari that it should organize a national security conference where non-military action will be uh, 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 exhaustively discussed. And at the end of the day, there will be a very veritable national strategy to engage terrorism or any sundry crime that we may be engaging with in Nigeria. These are the issues that have not been taken serious by the federal government. The commander in chief, in chief has the onerous responsibility to coordinate response. And we are not getting that coordination. Look at the degeneration we are having today in the southwest, in the southeast. Do you actually uh, respond to conflict, agitation, by classification of those people as terrorists, your citizens who have agitation? Is that how to manage crisis? The crisis has been poorly managed, managed. The responsibility of government was to have engaged in dialogue with this set of people. Whether you call them IPOP, they are citizens of Nigeria. Whether you call them those agitating for Odua Republic, you, they are citizens of Nigeria. These are fallouts. But, but if I may cut in, in, in your line of thought, if I may cut into your line of thought, Binru, how far has uh, dialogue gone at addressing issues uh, so far? We have had conferences. Uh, there were papers that came up. So a, many it, things. It, it, but it, it, uh, what not, are the results uh, at the end of the day? What manner, what, what, what manner of conferences have we been having? Politically induced conferences. I'm not talking of military conference. I'm not talking of politically... Uh, join this con uh, contest. I'm talking of the one that is uh, professionally led, the one that is uh, apolitically led mm -hmm. and constituted, the one that is uh, patriotically constituted, and of course the one that reflects uh, opinions and, sh uh, 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 and perspectives of diverse elements of the Nigerian society. But we have been having conferences, conferences of political actors, jobbers, and everything that come together. Even that one, do we implement the outcome? Mm. Even those one, do we implement the outcome? We had one. The latest one was the one uh, uh, former President Jonathan organized in 2014. Mm. The outcomes are there. Are they been implemented? We are. Look, when you are in position of authority, there must be symbolism. Now, the federal government of President Mohamed Buhari is not pulling out that symbolism. For example, uh, that you made allusion to that. A member of your cabinet is accused of being an Al-Qaeda sympathizer. All you could do is to give us, in this type of context of what we are fighting, all you could do was to release a, 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 a press a statement that you are in support of him, support of a terrorist sympathizer, even for symbolism, uh, Pantami ought to have been sacked. 
and Nigeria should begin to see whether Buhari actually mean business in resolving this crisis. And this happened in the context of where children from a university, Green uh, Field University, have just been killed. Let me give you a, a, a scenario that is very pathetic and that is challenging and, uh, and questioning our humanity in Nigeria. Do you know that in Sanfara State, in la last week, uh, two, three days ago, 91 people were killed and buried, human beings, Nigerians, and nobody, even the flag, if the flag is not flowing at a half mass, and everybody is talking of attack on a, or a Imo state gov a governor. 91 Nigerian citizens in Safara were brutally and callously murdered. And what is the response? Is that not enough? Is, is, is that not enough to shock those who are humanity uh, conscious, humanity, uh, a government that is concerned about what mankind is becoming, what humanity is becoming in Nigeria. We are not getting that. All we hear is that uh, a condolence a letter being written by the same president who have the responsibility ab initio to prevent the anarchy, to uh, uh, ensure protection for the people, and to remove uh, uh, citizens from harm land through responsible and responsive governance. Right. We are not getting that. Mm. Uh, Nigerians are, are, are frustrated and frustration leads to aggression. Aggression mm. leads to, uh, to, 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 to conflict. And conflict, when not managed, become violent conflict. And now we have extended the spectrum of conflict okay. to what has become the infernal uh, violent extremism that have uh, uh, held Nigeria down, particularly in the last six years right. of this administration of Muhammad Buhari. Right. Now, let's get uh, Dyer's reaction to this now. I if we are to proffer solutions, we can't stop talking about it because we cannot continue like this. Uh, a lot of Nigerians, there are still a lot of Nigerians who believe in the country in Nigeria and believe that there would be a turnaround sometime, sometime somehow. And the future of even our children is being held in jeopardy as it is because of the level of kidnappings and all of that that we are seeing. Something really has to be done. He mentioned uh, a national security conference uh, and he talked about it being patriotic and apolitical. And the question is, can that happen? It, can we ever achieve that? And is that the solution, the way forward? You mentioned earlier that the structure will operate now. Uh, if we continue like this, it wouldn't work. Is it a structure issue that, uh, that has to be tackled or a conference that is the way forward if we are to address this issue uh, from the root? So I, I think, uh, yeah, a good point he made there. Uh, but for me, for me, I look at it. Uh, how soon can we get the conference put together? And um, what would be the, the, the tenor of whatever they, they're going to do? And how soon can we get the, the, the report? Maybe that will happen in the long run. But I think in the short run, you see, all, all, all everybody is hacking is. Just like you told us, you belong to everybody. Just show you that you belong to everybody. So for me, I don't even care who are your security chiefs. Mm. I don't care whether they come from one village, all of them. What is important to me is that I, I can work freely in Nigeria. Right. My, my life is secure. My properties are secured. So, and I think that is the concern for many Nigerians. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, about whether it's low-sided or not, maybe that's not the issue. Now, let, us, let the whole world begin to see that you mean business. It starts from there. And you see, you cannot, nobody will take you serious if they don't see that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are overwhelmed, can you call for help? But again, they need to see that seriousness, that, that this person actually, this country actually means business. But they had even come out to say that we do not need any form of mercenaries or something. Or so so you, you keep telling us we don't need mercenary, we don't need any help from anywhere. But then you know, it keeps dying like chicken every day. Mm. Uh, so so what, what, what could be worse? You say we are not in a war situation. Mm. What could be worse? So if it's war, is it that whole, the whole Nigeria will be swept out, I mean, in just in a the, in the minute or something? So what, what I'm saying is the state we are in, uh, if, the, 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 if a government thinks they're overwhelmed, I think it's time to call for help. But the help will not come if we are not sure you yourself, you believe in this fight. So the government should be able to show that they believe in the fight. One, if people have, the, the people who have been fingered in this government, hmm. if for anything, let them go. 
We are not even bothered. Like, just, 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 just let them go. No, like that. Let them go. Just give a, a, sign, a sign to the people that, oh, I understand what you're talking about, and I really feel what you're feeling. So it's justified that this guy move. So let them move. Then once you do that, now ag ag agitation from all regions, for example. Now in, in Yoruba land you have the, the OPC, you have the other people saying, I mean the, in, the, in the East, you have the so all this agitation, once they see that you are fear to everybody, it will go down. What is what will fairness be? Now fairness is again uh, uh, you want me to talk. Yeah, fairness that's is, why you're is, here. is just that uh, you come to my land, mm. the backyard, where my great grandfather has been living for years, for hundreds of years. And you say it's your own, mm -hmm. and I should not fight. And I put up resistance. I even arrested you. And look, nothing will happen. They will tell you to your face, nothing will happen. And clearly, in this country, we have seen that nothing is going to happen. So again, but you you, you see all this, and the, the, again, what is the end result? Mm -hmm. You see what is going on in Benway. Now suddenly, Benway say you cannot do open grazing. Now suddenly, the cows are not coming to Benway, but the killing is going on in Benway. So, uh, for me, it's not about cow, it's not about... It, I think there's a special interest somewhere until uh, the government is able to prove me otherwise. I mean, prove us otherwise. So, what we're saying is, let people see that you are fair. So, I arrested a criminal or a suspect, and I hand it over to you, and nothing happened. And nobody hears anything. Then I won't believe in this system. I won't believe in that process again. Mm. So, if, if the government can just show that, this, this other agitation from all sides will go down. And again, we'll be talking about state police and all that. Maybe, maybe you want to do that. Maybe you don't want to do that. But there are people, there are local people who are trying to, you see, monitor what is going on in the environment. Can you give them support? Mm. Yeah. Let, let I mean, be clear with the modus operandi. Oh, don't do this, don't do this. But let it be clear that they are protecting the interest of the people. And if indeed they have criminals and all people that they have arrested, what do you do from? What do you do from there? So again, what I'm saying is, we can begin to give all kinds of solution, provide all kinds of solution. But the willingness from on the part of government, the sincerity, that is what it's about perception. Right. Once we begin to perceive, oh, they are doing something. This agitation will gradually go down. Okay, let's get uh, Biru's uh, final word on, on this now and talking about uh, solution. We see that uh, a lot of regions are coming up with their own security network. Uh, Ibubagu for the southeast is what they say they are going to stick with. And we also recall that there is the Amotaku in uh, <coughs> the southwest. I, I wonder if you also see that as some sort of solution to addressing this issue. And if not, what, what then do you think should be done to address this issue? Yeah, what, what, what we have is a very fluid violence. A very fluid violence that, uh, uh, and of course, there is fluidity of boundaries uh, uh, between states. So it can easily flow from one state to the other. Whether, and of course, all this, uh, whether Ebubiagu, whether uh, the Yoruba version, uh, which is uh, Amotekun, they have their own limitation, limitation in law, limitation in operation, limitation in strategy. The problem is that we have hydra added security arrangement that is exclusive to federal, uh, federal government. Mm. And it defeats the very purpose of federalism. A uh, state must have statutory police. That is not negotiable in a state like this. And it's more compelling now that we are facing this type of challenges that we have in Nigeria. And let me tell us uh, a story that happened in Sri Lanka, not even a Western state. S Sri Lanka, in 20, uh, 20, 2019, less than 40 people were killed, and the president and his cabinet resigned. They resigned because they have failed in their duty to protect their own citizens. Mm. That is one of the short-term measures that can be... If the president is finding the job too difficult... It can equally do that. There's nothing right. difficult about that. Mm. That means that you have placed the love of your country above your self-interest. That should be one of the uh, solutions that should be on the table right now. All we right. are not going to sacrifice Nigeria for the survival of a regime. It's mm. not possible. A regime elsewhere should be sacrificed for the survival of the country. That's how it works in civilized society. Right. And to come home again in terms of... Uh, a new solution. Quickly, new please. solution is that symbolism must be demonstrated by the government. The people is not seeing our president. 
they are seeing their president. Therefore, cooperation is neither here nor there. And solution will never happen unless you are able to mobilize Nigeria along the line of national consensus, along the line of national integration, so that we begin to focus and own our problem collectively and solve it uh, unitedly. Right. That we'll leave it there now. Gbero Olaju Igbe, we have to leave the conversation here for want of time. Thank you so much, uh, Executive Director Emergency and Risk Alert Gbero Olaju Igbe for your time on the program, as well as Public Affairs Analyst Dayo Lumuwagun. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. It's always my pleasure. Thank you. Right.